Have you ever tried to search for something, but you don't quite have the words? Or do you remember some characters in a movie, but you can't remember the name of the movie? Or have you ever tried to find another tracksuit, just like that one that you had back in the day, but you don't know exactly how to search for it? Are you using large language models that don't have the most current information? If you answered yes to any of these questions, vector search is exactly what you're looking for. Vector search is the capability of searching based on meaning. This technique employs machine learning models, often called encoders, to transform text, audio, images, and other types of data into high dimensional vectors. Vectors, also referred to as embeddings, are essentially a high dimensional array of numbers that captures the semantic meaning of a word, a phrase, or even an entire sentence. This is what a vector looks like. To a human, it's just numbers, but to an AI, it's knowledge. These vectors can then be searched through to find similar content based on multiple vectors being near one another in a high dimensional space. Now, this can be a great complement to traditional keyword based search techniques, but it's also seeing an explosion of excitement because of its ability to enhance the capabilities of large language models or LLMs by providing knowledge outside of what the LLMs currently know. In search use cases, this allows you to find relevant results even when the exact keyword isn't known. This technique can also be useful in a variety of contexts, such as natural language processing and recommendation systems. Now, as you probably already know, MongoDB Atlas has supported full text search since 2020, allowing you to do rich text searches on your MongoDB data. The core difference between vector search and text search is that Vector search queries on meaning instead of the exact text or even fuzzy text match. And because of this, it can also search data beyond just text. So what are some of the benefits of vector search? First, semantic understanding. Rather than searching for exact matches, vector search enables semantic searching. This means that even if the query words aren't present in the index, but the meaning of the phrases are similar, they will still be considered a match. Next, it's scalable. Vector search can be done on large data sets, making it perfect for the use cases where you have a lot of data. It's also flexible. Different types of data, including text, uh, but also unstructured data like audio, images, and video can be semantically searched. Now, while there are a lot of vector databases popping up during this AI revolution, you'll be able to satisfy all of your data storage needs in one place. MongoDB isn't just a document database, but it's a developer data platform. Not only does it offer unstructured data storage, you can also easily store your vector embeddings and use vector search, along with many other great features. You're going to gain efficiency. By storing the vectors together with the original data, you avoid the need to sync data between your application database and your vector store at both the query and write time. You'll also get consistency. Storing the vectors with the data ensures that the vectors are always associated with the correct data. This can be important in situations where the vector generation process might change over time. By storing the vectors, you can be sure that you always have the correct vectors for a given piece of data. And this simplifies everything. Storing vectors with the data simplifies the overall architecture of your application. You don't need to maintain a separate service or database for the vectors. And this reduces the complexity and potential points of failure in your system. And of course, it's scalable. With the power of MongoDB Atlas, vector storage and vector search on MongoDB scales horizontally and vertically, allowing you to power the most demanding workloads. Now it's show and tell time. Let's see how it works. If you don't already have a MongoDB Atlas account, it's completely free. There's a video right here that you can watch and it'll get you started. It will walk you through setting up your first free cluster. And we're going to use one of our sample databases that you can load, but it's important that you don't load the sample data yet. Just create the cluster. Our plan is to have OpenAI enrich our sample Inflix movie database by adding vector data to each movie. And then we're going to set up a trigger that runs every time a new movie is added to the database. This trigger function will generate the vector embeddings and add them to the document as it's inserted. We'll then set up a search index so that we can use these vector embeddings. And then we'll insert our data and then finally see how we can query our data using vector search. 
right, so first we're going to create our database and collection so that we can create an Atlas trigger. So here under databases, I'm going to browse collections for this cluster. I'm going to click add my own data and then I'll give the database a name. It's going to be sample underscore inflix and the collection name will be movies. There's no additional preferences and then we'll create. So now we have a blank database and collection here. Next, we're going to create an Atlas trigger that's going to call the OpenAI API whenever a new document is inserted into this collection. Now you will have to have an OpenAI account and an API key. There's a link in the description below if you don't already have one. And this is what that looks like. If I go over to my account and then view API keys, you should create a new secret and then copy the API key because you'll need it in just a minute. So let's create that trigger. On the left, we'll go over to triggers and then get started. The trigger type is going to be a database. Now you can name the trigger, whatever you'd like. Under trigger source details, we're going to select our cluster zero. We're going to select the sample inflix database and the collection is going to be movies. For our operation type, we want insert, update and replace. We want the full document. And for this, we're going to run a function. Now it has a sample function here. We're going to change this out in just a minute. Let's go ahead and for now, save this. Within this triggers function, we're going to use our OpenAI API key. So we need to save that to a secret. In Atlas, that's called values and we can get to values under app services. So let's go over to app services and here we'll see our triggers app. So let's go ahead and open our triggers app and here in app services, you'll find triggers, functions, and right now we want to add values. So let's go to values and create a new value. I'm going to name mine OpenAI secret. This is going to be a secret. And then paste in your OpenAI API key. Be sure to keep this safe, never let anyone see it. And then let's save that. Now we're gonna create another value. This one I'm going to name OpenAI value. This is going to be a value and we're going to link to the secret that we created OpenAI secret. And we'll save that. This is how we're going to securely reference this API key in our trigger. So now if we go over to functions, we can go ahead and define that function for our trigger. And this is just the default function. So we're going to clear that out and I'll paste in a new function and then we'll go over it. So again, this function is going to run from our trigger. The trigger happens every time a document is inserted, updated or replaced. So the first thing that we'll do is get our current document. We're going to define our URL is api.openai.com v1 embeddings. And then we'll get our open AI key. So this is what we named our OpenAI value. We have a console log just to let us know what's going on. And then we're gonna call the OpenAI API to get the embeddings. So we're going to post here in the body. We're going to json.stringify and our input is going to be the doc.plot. So we're going to create vector embeddings for the movie plot field. And we're going to use the A to two text embedding model. After that, we'll get our response data and if our response status code is 200, then we're going to console log just so we know what's going on. And then we'll get our embedding. We'll get our movies collection from the sample inflix database. And then we're going to run an update one. So where the ID equals the document ID, we're going to set a new field called plot underscore embedding. And we're going to set that equal to our embedding data that we received back from OpenAI. And then just some basic error handling here. So let's save this function. And again, this trigger is going to happen every time a new document is created or a document is updated in this collection. And there's an article linked in the video description below with the full code examples that you can copy and paste. All right, now we need to create an index to make these vector embeddings searchable. So we're gonna go back to data services. We're gonna go to our database. We'll go to our cluster. And then there's a search tab. So we're going to create a search index. We'll use the JSON editor and then click next. I'm going to name mine movies plot index. And then we'll select the collection that this is for. So it's going to be the movies collection. And then I'll paste in this JSON configuration for our index. So this is where we can set our vector dimensions, similarity, type. Notice here that we're using the KNN type. KNN stands for K nearest neighbors, which is the algorithm frequently used to find vectors near one another. And for more information on these settings, there's a helpful article linked in the video description. So let's go ahead and click next and create this search index. 
So now we need to insert our data. As the data is inserted, the trigger is going to run on each insert, executing the function script that we just wrote, and then the data will be indexed using the KNN index that we just set. All right, so let's go back to databases, and then we'll click the three dots here on our cluster, and then load sample data set, and then go ahead and load the sample data set. Now, if everything has been set up correctly, the sample inflix database and movies collection will have the plot embeddings created on the plot field and added to a new plot underscore embeddings field. That's going to take a little bit of time. I'll speed this up. All right, it looks like our data set has been successfully loaded. Let's browse collections. And now we have all of our sample data here. Uh, let's go take a look at our sample inflix database and our movies collection. Let's take a look at one of these documents. If we go through here, uh, we see a plot underscore embedding field. And then in this field, we see our vector embeddings. There are 1,536 to be exact. Okay, so now that we have our embeddings generated in our collection for each movie plot, we can now query that data and we're going to use Node.js for that. And because we're using vector search, our query itself needs to also be transformed into an embedding. So I have an example script here that we can look through to see how we could accomplish that. So we're gonna use a couple of packages. Uh, we're gonna use Axios, our MongoDB Node.js driver, and the .env package to store our environment variables. So we're gonna get our OpenAI API key and our MongoDB connection string from our env file that I have over here. Now to get your connection string, just go to your database, connect, drivers, we're using Node.js, so this is my connection string. You'll need to get yours. You'll also need to put in your MongoDB user and password. So it's actually easier if we go to the bottom of this and work our way up. So we have a main function and we're calling that main function. So within this function, we have a query. So we can put whatever our query is here. The first thing it's going to do is get the embedding for our query. And then it's going to use our queries embedding to then find similar documents in our embeddings in MongoDB. And then we're just going to console log the documents that return. So let's take a look at these functions. So first, getting our query embedding. So here we're going to call the OpenAI API. We're gonna use Axios to do that. We're gonna pass in our query. We're gonna use the A to two text embedding model just like we did with the movie plots. We'll pass in our API key, and then we're going to get a response. We'll return that embedding. So then we're going to use that embedding to find similar documents. For that, we're going to connect to MongoDB using our connection string. We're going to use our sample inflix database and our movies collection. And then here's the good stuff. We're going to use an aggregation pipeline and the new dollar vector search stage. We'll specify the movies plot index that we just created. Our vector will be our query embedding. We'll tell it which field to use in our documents for searching the plot underscore embedding field and then how many of the nearest matches to return. For this example, we'll return the top five. And then just to make the output neat, we'll just project the title and the plot fields. Now, for more information on the dollar vector search stage and its parameters, the documentation is linked in the video description. All right, so let's go ahead and set our query. I can't quite remember that movie where I think there's a boy and a yellow dog. What is that movie name? Let's save that and run this file. All right, so I'm going to run node app. And here we get back the top five results. That's what it was, Old Yeller. And we get some other results that are similar. Uh, Bingo, The Biscuit Eater, Kess, and Benji, of course. So again, this script first transforms your query into an embedding using the OpenAI API, and then queries your MongoDB cluster for documents with similar embeddings. Now, for more information on querying with vector search, the docs are linked in the description below. And that's it. You've successfully set up a MongoDB Atlas cluster and an Atlas trigger, which calls the OpenAI API to embed documents when they get inserted into the cluster, and you've performed a vector search query. Congratulations. Again, for the complete code examples and more information, there are some reference links in the video description below. If this video was helpful, give it a like, subscribe for more MongoDB content.